All right, welcome to 4.2 Quadratic Functions. In this section, our focus is going to be on graphing quadratic functions. And in order to do that, we have to be able to find the vertex. We have to find the axis of symmetry. We also want to be able to determine what the maximum and minimum values are, and then any y-intercepts that the graph has. Uh, we'll also talk about uh, writing an equation for a quadratic function. All right, to get us going, make sure that we understand that a quadratic function is of the form f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. All right, we're going to refer to this later on as standard form. And you may recall, you know, finding the vertex using the opposite of b over 2a. But in this section, our focus is going to be on... Uh, using what we call vertex form. Vertex form is, uh, we're going to use y equal to a times x minus h quantity squared uh, plus k. And so now you can see where the idea of um, uh, com completing the square is going to come into play. All right, our vertex. Our vertex comes from our h and k. So it is h comma k h is always the opposite of what you see in the parentheses, k stays the same. Our axis of symmetry is x equal to the x value of the vertex, or in this case, x equal to h. And I do like that it is written as x equal to, don't just write the number, because it's an equation for a line, and an equation needs an x equals. Our y-intercept is going to be 0, comma, f of 0, as in you have to plug the 0 in in order to uh, figure out what the y-intercept is. And then our maximum and minimum value is going to be our k value. It's the y value of the vertex. But understand that in order for it to be a max, okay, that means that it has to be concave down, it has to be upside down, all right? And when that's occurring, that means that our a value is negative. And in order for it to be a minimum, Okay, well then that means that it is right side up and our A value is positive. Okay, so make sure you understand the difference between our max and our min. All right, so if I were to give just a general example of a graph, okay, so here's your parabola. Down here is H comma K, your vertex. Your axis of symmetry is that line that cuts the graph in half. So that's our x equal to h, okay? Um, your minimum or maximum value, in this case it would be a minimum value, is, reminder, the k value of the vertex, okay? And then y-intercepts, well, if this graph were to be extended, well, then remember that it has an x value of 0, so it would be 0 comma f of 0. We would have to compute and figure out what it is. All right, let's go ahead and look at an example. So we've got y equal to negative 2x minus 3 squared minus 1. A couple things you should be thinking already. The fact that they gave us a negative 2 tells us that our parabola is going to be upside down. So I would be thinking about that even before you get started. All right, so your vertex is going to be at positive 3 and then negative 1. Your axis of symmetry is going to be at x equal to 3. Uh, your y-intercept, if I plug in 0 for my x, well, that gives me 0 minus uh, 3, which is negative 3, squared is 9, times the negative 2 is negative 18, minus 1 is negative 19, okay? I'm not going to worry about graphing it, but it's good to know where it is, all right? And then uh, we already know that it is upside down, so it's going to have a maximum value, and that it is occurring at negative 1, okay? All right, so we go to 3, negative 1, and we plot our point. That's our vertex. All right, from there, if I want to um, get a good idea of what the graph looks like, it would be uh, good to have two other points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in uh, 2, and I'm going to plug in 4 because they're right next to the vertex, and they both should give me the same y value because of symmetry. Remember, our axis of symmetry is this. So whatever is occurring on the left side of that line is also occurring on the right side of the line. So if I plug in 2, I get 2 minus uh, 3, which is negative 1, squared is 1, 
times negative 2 is negative 2, okay? And then minus 1 gives me negative 3. So I know at 2, I've got a point at negative 3, and therefore at 4, I also know it's going to be at negative 3. And if I want to plug in other points, I can, but I have a general idea of what the graph looks like. It looks like a parabola that is going down like this, okay? All right, let's try another example. All right, on this one, okay, the reason why I chose this one is because it is not written in vertex form. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we are going to put this in vertex form. So we've done this a little bit already. Uh, reminder that we are going to change this to x squared minus 2x plus blank, and then plus 3, and then minus blank. Here's what you have to understand, is the fact that we're adding the same amount and subtracting, or adding something to one side, we have to subtract the same amount to the same side in order for them to basically negate each other and get back to what we started with, okay? All right, so remember that uh, we're going to take half of b, which is negative 1, square it, and we get 1. So that means we're adding 1 and we're subtracting 1, okay, on the same side which means that we can now complete the square with this and get x minus 1. Remember, minus 1 comes from half of our b value, squared, and then plus 2. So y equals x minus 1 quantity squared plus 2. All right? Um, uh, notice that our a value is a positive 1, so we know that it's going up. We already know that it has a minimum. Okay, so again, think about those things in your head. All right, so we've got our vertex at 1, 2. Our axis of symmetry is at x equal to 1. If I want to find my y-intercept, I'm going to plug in 0. Let's see, 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Squared is 1. Plus 2 is 3. Okay, and minimum value we already know is going to be at 2. All right, so I graph my vertex at 1, 2. All right. And since I already know one of my points, 0, 3, I have this point right here. Okay, and because I have my axis of symmetry passing right through the vertex, I already know a third point, and I don't even have to compute it. It's right there. Okay, and that creates my parabola. So there's a benefit of knowing what the y-intercept is. It figured out a symmetric point for us, and now we're able to graph pretty easily. All right, part two of this, okay? This is our focus on writing a quadratic function. So it goes back to um, understanding the y equal to a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. All right, so number one goal is we want to basically find a, okay? And the reason uh, we want to find a is because that's the only piece that they don't give us. All right, let's take a look at uh, what I mean by that. All right, the graph passes through 2, comma 1. When they give you a point that it passes through, they're telling you that's your x and that's your y. And then they give us the vertex of 4, negative 3. Well, that's our h and that's our k. So if I go and look at this equation, the only letter I don't know is A. So I'm going to plug in, and I've got 1 equal to A, and then parentheses. My x value is 2, my h value is uh, 4, quantity squared, and then minus 3 for my k. Now my focus is solving, so 1 is equal to A times negative 2 squared, and then minus 3, I'll add 3 to the other side and get 4 equal to a times 4, divide by 4, and a is equal to 1. All right, so it tells me that my parabola is going up and that I have a minimum value. Now, we're not done because remember that the goal is to write a quadratic function. So all we have to do now is you have to, number 2, is plug in a, h, and k. Do not plug in for x and y, because since we're writing a function, we need an x and y. 
So y is equal to, I can write the 1, but I don't have to, and then x minus 4 quantity squared, and then minus 3. And that's my quadratic function right there. Okay? All right, let's do this again. This time I am giving you different pieces of information. So, for example, on uh, this, when it says the graph touches the x-axis, okay, part of uh, these word problems is interpreting, okay? Uh, and that's one of, you know, it's that intuitive process that we learn from math, okay? When it says it touches the x-axis at negative 3, this is what it wants you to understand, okay? That our graph is coming up and touching at negative 3 and coming back down, or it is going down, touching at negative 3, and going back up. We don't know whether it's up or down because we have to solve for A first. Remember, that's our goal number 1. Okay. Um, if it had said it passes through at negative 3, well then we would use the point you know, 0, comma, negative 3 as maybe our x and our y. But since it is telling us that it is um, touching, you have to interpret then that your vertex is at zero comma, sorry, I apologize, um, at negative three comma zero. And that's our H and that's our K. And then it has a Y intercept of uh, negative nine, which is the point zero comma negative nine. That's our X, that's our Y. So we go through the process of solving for A like we did above. So y is equal to negative 9. I don't know what my a value is. My x value is 0 minus my uh, h value of negative 3, which means I'm technically adding 3, squaring that, and then plus k. And you don't have to write the plus 0. I'm just showing it. All right, from here I've got negative 9 is equal to 0, uh, 0 plus 3 is 3, squared is 9, so it looks like 9a which tells me a is equal to negative 1. All right, so then I write my equation. y is equal to negative 1, and then parentheses x plus 3, because minus a negative 3, squared. And again, I don't have to write the plus 0. And that is our equation. All right, if you have questions, bring them to class, and we'll see you tomorrow.